Hello class, this is Mr. Mormon. Welcome to video number three in our cells unit. Today we're going to be talking about the microscope. The invention of the microscope allowed us to discover a whole new world, the microscopic world. So let's start with a little history. In 1590, the first compound microscope was invented. It was created by Hans Johnson and his son Zacharias. They were Dutch eyeglass makers who made uh, the very first compound microscopes. These were simple microscopes um, that was basically just a tube with a lens at each end. In the 1600s, the microscope was developed further and led to some of the early discoveries. Robert Hooke used this microscope here to make some of his famous drawings of um, of the first cells. These are, are drawings from his notebook of cork. Robert Hooke is the one, is the person who gave us the name cells. Uh, when he looked through his microscope and saw all these little structures, they reminded him of cells in a jail. Um, and that's where he got, got the name. At around the same time, another Dutchman, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, um, started looking at pond water and scrapings that he took from his teeth and things like that. And he found all sorts of tiny microscopic organisms. Leeuwenhoek used a very simple microscope that looked like this. This is a simple microscope because it only has one lens. The objects that were placed at the end of the tip uh, of this pointer here, um, and you would hold the device up to the light and look through it from the other side through the lens uh, to see the objects. Hooke's microscope was more like ours. It was a compound microscope with more than one lens. A compound microscope has an eyepiece with the lens up here, and there's another lens down at this end. All of these early microscopes were light microscopes. They used light through lenses to see the images, like the microscopes that we use in class. The first modern compound light microscopes, again, very similar to the ones that we use in class today, came about in the late 1800s. Again, these were compound microscopes using more than one lens, one lens up here in the eyepiece, and then objective lenses down here in the nose piece. Uh, these lenses could be changed so that you could have different powers of magnification. Much more powerful microscopes called electron microscopes have been developed since. The uh, transmission electron microscope, the scanning electron microscope, and the tunneling um, electron microscope or scanning tunneling uh, microscope can magnify images much, much higher. Light microscopes can, up, can get up to about a thousand times magnification. Um, these types of electron microscopes can get up to a million times magnification. These are the kinds of images that you might see through a compound light microscope. Here we see some microscopic organisms, uh, single-celled uh, organisms. This one would be an amoeba. Uh, this is a paramecium. These are creatures you might find in pond water. And these are what some plant cells would look like under a compound light microscope. The invention of the electron microscope allows us to see much greater magnification, like we see here. An electron microscope uses uh, showers or uh, beams of electrons to develop an image, um, which is going to give you much higher resolution, much higher magnification, because electrons are very, 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 very small. A light microscope is limited by the wavelength of light, so you can only get so much magnification. The drawback to an electron microscope is that the image doesn't have color. Uh, all the color that you're going to see in the images I show you has been added. You, uh, the, the microscope itself is connected to a computer, computer that creates the image. The uh, technician can then add color like you see in, in some of these pictures. This is a neutrophil cell which would be found in bo bone marrow. And at this magnification, we can start to see that there's lots of different organelles inside the cell. Here we see an electron microscope micrograph of a plant cell. Again, at this high magnification, 12,000 times, you can see lots of different organelles. 
we can magnify even further and start to see the detail of these organelles. These are ribosomes, which are the smallest of the organelles. Uh, here's some endoplasmic reticulum. Again, look at the magnifications here, 20,000 times, 160,000 times magnification, way more than you can get with a light microscope. Let's recall that ribosomes are where proteins are made inside the cell, and the endoplasmic reticulum are passageways for moving things like proteins around. Here we see a magnification of Golgi bodies. Remember, this is the, the organelle which packages protein and works with the endoplasmic reticulum for transport. These are just artist drawings of what they often look like when they're drawn. And here's the mighty mitochondria. Remember that this is where respiration happens, where the energy is released from glucose to power everything that the cell does. They're long and thin with a folded membrane inside. They're usually sausage or bean shaped. Again, this is the way they're often drawn. And here we see a highly magnified image of a chloroplast. Chloroplasts are found in plant cells and other autotrophic microorganisms. Uh, this is where photosynthesis happens, capturing sunlight energy and turning it into glucose, capturing that energy and storing it in the chemical bonds of glucose to be used later by the cell. Okay, let's get some vocabulary down. A compound microscope is a light microscope that uses more than one lens. Then there's magnification, which is the ability to make objects look larger than they actually are. The lenses on our microscope tell you the magnification, and they write it like this. 10x means 10 times magnification, or that lens is making things look 10 times bigger. Now, remember, in a compound microscope, we're looking through more than one lens, and you need to know that the lenses multiply. When looking through the low power um, objective on the microscope, again, this column would be our eyepiece. The eyepiece is usually 10x. Uh, with the low power, which is the shortest, shortest lens, that's 4 times magnification. 10 times 4 is a total of 40 times magnification on low power. Medium is a, a 10, 10x objective lens, 10x eyepiece, gives us 100 times magnification. And on high power, 10 times 40 gives us a total of 400 times magnification. It's also important to note that the way the lenses bend the light actually ends up reversing the image. You can kind of see what's going on here. The lenses reverse the image, so it's going to be both upside down and backward. When you try to center an image in the field of view, uh, if you need to move it, if you want the image to move to the left, you, meet, you need to move the slide to the right. If you need the image to move down, you need to move the slide up. Everything is reversed. This figure shows what I'm talking about. Here, the, uh, the letter F is placed on the slide right side up and normal. And you can see what the image looks like in the microscope. It is both upside down and backwards. Of course, it's been magnified, it's bigger, but it's upside down and backwards. Field of view is the area you see when looking through the microscope. If this is what you see looking through the microscope, this would be your field of view. We can also talk about resolution. This is the ability to clearly dis distinguish the individual parts of an object. You can think of resolution as the sharpness of the image. A microscope increases both magnification and resolution. A high resolution television, that would be like a high def TV, uh, which would, be, uh, would have the sharpest image. This diagram shows us some of the parts of the microscope. This would be the kind of microscope like the microscopes we use in class. I'll start at the top and work my way down. This is the eyepiece where you look through. This would be the body tube. This is the arm. This is the nose piece which rotates the different objective lenses into place, low power, high power objective lens. This is the stage where, where you place the, the glass slides that you'll be looking at. There's two clips, stage clips, which hold the slide in place. 
Underneath the stage is something called the diaphragm. This lever opens and closes the diaphragm, which cuts down on the light. The light is coming from the illuminator, an electric light underneath, or um, a mirror, which is reflecting light up into the microscope. Down at the bottom, we have the base, and we have the two adjustment knobs, the large coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. These two knobs could be separated on some microscopes. Uh, here we see one on top of the other. Also, some of our microscopes have a mechanical stage, which has two knobs underneath here, which move the stage left and right and up and down so that you can uh, change the position of the slide. You should become familiar with all of the different parts of a microscope. There are a few important rules to remember when using a microscope. One, always carry the microscope with two hands. One under the base and one on the arm. Always place the microscope flat on the table or desk, never on books or notebooks or anything like that. Place it down so that the arm is facing you. You should only use lens paper to clean the lenses. Okay, so let's finish up with uh, the procedures for properly focusing a microscope. So here we brought the microscope to our desk. It's sitting flat like it, like it should be. Uh, we've cleaned the lenses and we're ready to get started. Notice that the arm is facing us. And the low power objective is in position. Here's the low power objective. It's the short one. You always start with low power. You're then going to get your slide. Now, often the slides are in a case like this. You have to open up the little plastic case and take out the slide. The slide is then placed on the stage. This little lever holds the slide in place. This is a mechanical stage. You can turn these knobs and it will move the specimen into position or the slide into position. You'll turn the light on. Center the object in the middle of the opening of the stage. Make sure that the diaphragm is all the way open. You want it all the way open to begin with. Later, you can cut down on the light if you need to. We'll start with the stage all the way up. You then look through the eyepiece and slowly start moving it down until it comes into focus. Notice I start using uh, the, the course adjustment knob. That's this one. Uh, once I get it close to focus, I then move to the fine adjustment knob. If it goes all the way down and you never get it into focus, maybe you didn't have the object in place, uh, it centered properly, uh, or you just went past the focus point. Just go back up to the top and start again. Go very slowly and the object will come into focus. Fine tune it with the fine adjustment knob. One of the most common problems students have is they don't start at the top. Um, you want to start with the object close to the lens and focus away, going very slowly. Another problem students often have is they don't have the nose piece clicked into place. You will feel it click into place when the lens is in the right position. All right, I've got it focused under low power. Now I want to go to medium power. All I do Again, you always start with low power. I'm now ready to just swing it into place. I bring the, low, the medium power lens into place and look and fine tune it then with the fine adjustment knob. If I want to go to high power, again, I focused under a lower power first. I then switch to high power. 
Now you always want to look from the side and make sure that the lens is not going to hit. Okay, fine tune with the fine adjustment knob. After every use, make sure you remove the slide. Return the nose piece to low power. Make sure the lamp is turned off. The microscopes are stored with a dust cover that goes over it like this. Okay, that's it for our lesson on the microscope. If you have any questions, please talk to me tomorrow.